evening good morning and a very warm welcome to yet another episode of prime time exclusives it gives me immense pleasure to introduce sunil jairam global sales force practice head at tech mahindra sunil has worked with tech mahindra for more than 10 years and has been in the industry for over two decades as a crm practitioner crm consultant and a crm architect he is a graduate of university of madras <clears throat> Apart from this, Sunil is actively involved with an organization called Chitlapakkam Rising, an NGO focused on bringing social reforms in India. The organization planted more than 1,000 trees, roadside, and miyawakis in the last few years. They have also worked towards bringing a new life for the Chitlapakkam Lake in Chennai. It is a matter of pride for us that Tech Might Tech has participated in the execution of such initiatives. Let's welcome Sunil to the one thirty fifth episode of Prime Time Exclusives. Over to you, Sunil. Thank you, thank you, Sarab, and thanks for the Prime Time team for having me uh, take your next one hour. And thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I did create a small presentation to uh, narrate uh, what I'm here to uh, share with you, and I think the topic may be a little misleading. I think uh, KG said it's what is your purpose, and let me start with a disclaimer. I'm not a new gen guru. to guide you to figure out what your purpose is so i am here to just narrate my story on what i did uh, over and above and above and beyond the day to day work that i do at techm to maybe find my purpose and maybe through my narration of what i've been doing in this space maybe you will get to uh, take some pointers and see how you can probably uh, replicate uh, some of this and hope my uh, slide is visible uh, sarab and others it is it is sunil you can go okay. so i'll take uh, maybe the next 30 40 minutes just to quickly walk you through um, i mean how i've been uh, searching for my happiness and how i ended up figuring out some formula to uh, define what my purpose uh, for this life is and how that can probably give me uh, more happiness as i said above and beyond the uh, day to day work that we all do and i think being in it leading large teams right winning uh, deals implementing a successful outcome for criteria itself is a worthy purpose and i'm sure there is uh, a ton of happiness that we all derive from that but i think given the uh, the time that we are in on this planet earth i mean there is maybe some more things that we could do as a individual to see what else uh, could in enhance the happiness that we have and that the attempt in uh, narrating this uh, experience of mine so uh, My name is Sunil Chairam, and I think most of you know me. Uh, I head the Enterprise of uh, Future Group in Techem, focusing on the SaaS platform, Salesforce, Microsoft CRM, and uh, HR SaaS applications. And this session is about uh, what I do uh, beyond Techem, which is a role I play in a volunteering organization called Chitlapakam Rising. And uh, Chitlapakam Rising uh, takes the name after the town uh, I'm from. So I'm uh, I was brought up in Chitlapakam. a small town in chennai i did my schooling there and i went to a college uh, nearby there and i've been uh, there uh, most of my life and from from a career standpoint i did spend uh, 15 years in the us and when i decided uh, 10 years ago to return back to uh, chennai back to chitlapakkam i also found this uh, role to lead uh, the salesforce practice and others in techm so uh, this is me and let me uh, dive into uh, the presentation needless to say i mean we are in a determining decade and i am sure there is no one uh, who is doubting that we are in a determining de- decade and some even think that uh, we have crossed the point of return right that is the level of damage that we see that happens across the planet on our uh, day to day life i mean we could see uh, climate crisis becoming increasingly bad even a small rain is causing havoc across and when there is a scarcity for a rain even for a couple of months there is water scarcity hitting us all through the year so uh, i'm pretty sure everybody agrees to this if somebody is in disagreement to this you can raise it as a point towards the end of the presentation i will be more than happy to listen to your point of view and then uh, answer your questions as well but what this uh, climate crisis uh, provides us for us as individuals as responsible citizens some avenue to make a difference right and uh, there are n number of opportunities that are out uh, in the open i mean it could be even uh, technology oriented the change that we could bring in or by contributing our time our effort or sponsoring some good cause 
there are a number of ways for us to significantly make some difference during especially during this climate crisis period and uh, to some extent uh, my story which i'm going to present to you is uh, that aspect of it what i chose to do uh, in this climate crisis era in this determining decade to bring some difference to the neighborhood i live in and uh, i always narrate uh, three things right i think when we are in a crossroads of wanting to do something there was always a iota of doubt in our mind i mean why should i even uh, care about this why should i do this i have a comfortable life living i have a great family uh, that i belong in i have i live in a beautiful neighborhood why should i even think above and beyond and do anything else other than my day to day work right i think that's the uh, doubt that we all uh, come to grips with when we are in crossroads of doing something uh, above and beyond and then going out of the flow and then trying something different right and this is a very interesting catchy phrase that i came across maybe some 12 15 years back right which kind of uh, was a pivotal moment in my life when i started looking things uh, from this phrase point of view and this was told by uh, a nobel prize winner named satyarthi maybe some of you would know he was a nobel winner a uh, couple of years back for uh, uh, helping with child trafficking for stopping child trafficking so he got the nobel prize and in one of the interviews he said uh, when the journalist asked him it's a very difficult thing what you are doing uh, for the nation helping um, child children getting saved from traffickers the mafia and which also may uh, threaten his own life right to that he said he came across this uh, chinese proverb which literally means if not you who if not now when and he said that changed his life and then uh, after reading through his experience i just started applying this to myself so when we are in crossroads right it could be a major crossroad where you are seeing somebody maybe uh, snatching a wallet from somebody on the road and then running away right or somebody uh, knocking down a person in a motorbike and somebody is bleeding to his death or her death or even a small thing like somebody is asking you for some help to uh, help them with the situation in any big or small situations i started applying this small uh, simple proverb in my own uh, world and then think that okay should i be the one who should be doing it and should i be doing it now or later or what should be my stance and every time when i apply this small thing i get a very clear answer that uh, we should definitely not go with the flow and try to do something uh, differently at that moment and not procrastinate and do something now and uh, every time i think the outcome of that has been useful to me i request all of you to also keep this in mind uh, when you approach your own uh, life situations the second important thing is the moment you decide to do something which is not going with the flow right and very very simple things right i think you stop um, you see somebody crossing a red light and then you uh, ask them to follow the rules and then ask them to wait for the green before they move they won't even listen to you so they won't even uh, listen to you they will just completely neglect you right and then they will start criticizing you in a way and then they even make a mockery of you uh, saying why do you care it's not your role you mind your business why do you interfere in mine right and then the moment you increase your voice you show them that you will be consistent with your demand that you expect them to do the right things follow the legalities of things right and be the be a, a rightful citizen uh, on whatever situations you are challenging them with they will at, at times even start to fight with you right and then the ultimate thing is if you are persistent in what your demands are and if you are genuine in what you are chasing for you will ultimately win and again this is a beautiful phrase i mean this was attributed to mahatma gandhi but then uh, google says that no no it's not by mahatma gandhi it's somebody else but whatever it is i think it's again a very very meaningful uh, thing which is real when you go outside of the flow try to do something different there will be people who are willing to ridicule you they will try to stop you they will even challenge you fight you but then if you are persistent if you are genuine you will become the change that uh, you want to see in others and the third important thing again a uh, fantastic uh, i mean learning and experience that even i had whatever may be the outcome that you uh, strive for as long as it is genuine it is not a selfish thing that you are expecting uh, uh, an outcome of be rest assured that the entire universe will come to your rescue will start helping you 
will make sure that you achieve your goals. Right. Again, this is uh, from uh, Paolo Coelho. I'm sure most of you might have read him. But this is, uh, I mean, in my experience of uh, doing certain things for uh, many years in the past two decades, I mean, I can uh, unequivocally say that this is something which is real. And the moment you step out, st start and wish for something really good, really genuine, which is going to change lives, help others, right? Some uh, noble cause. Then you will see that help will come from all different corners, from your own friend circle, from your colleagues, from your family, even from the government, a, many different corners to make sure that you achieve your end goal. And uh, even a, I'm sure it's no surprise, right? I think, I mean, the planet, the planet Earth, I mean, forget the universe. I mean, even planet Earth is smarter than what we think it is, right? I think we all know that uh, it has survived for millions and millions of years, and which means there is something which makes things happen. And the only thing that is expected out of you is uh, intent to do something good, which will change lives, which will help someone. And then the help will come from all different corners to make sure that that is uh, happening and the outcome that you expect to see in the world happens. And I can say this with all firmness, mainly because I have seen uh, many examples happen in front of my eyes, right? And what I'm showcasing here, and probably one of the reasons why I'm doing this session is I shared this image in my LinkedIn saying this is my town. Uh, there is a water body called Chitlapakam Lake, a huge, large acres of water body, which was neglected for so many years, uh, almost two decades, right? It became a garbage dump yard. It became a sewage tank. It became uh, choked with all wrong things other than fresh water. So that changed when we started with a couple of friends joined hands together uh, from the neighborhood. We said uh, we will not allow bad things to continue in the town. So let's take some steps to bring some course correction in people's behavior, in administration's attitude towards uh, the public space, water body, roads and whatnots. And then we said we want to achieve excellence for the town. We want to improve our quality of life. We want to improve um, where we live in, the space we live in, and we want to live a better town for the next generation and so forth, right? So the moment we came together as a team, said we will do certain things to revive this. I mean, there are unbelievable next steps that automatically started happening one after the other. And what you see in the screen is a reflection of how a lake which was neglected for so many years was fixed. It's now... Uh, a pure freshwater lake without a single iota of a plastic in there. There is no single drop of sewage in the lake. It's a freshwater lake which is available in the town. And uh, where I am based in, in Chennai, it's 20 minutes from the Chennai office. And uh, whoever is willing over the weekend, you can come over, we'll be there. I can showcase it to you. What I wanted to do in the next few minutes is I want to narrate how this happened, right? I think that's the biggest question uh, everybody asked me when I post this on LinkedIn. And uh, all this happened with volunteering by uh, ensuring that we asked the right questions to the right set of people. And more importantly, we were very persistent in our asks, remaining very consistent in saying that uh, we will not settle for anything less. We want a world-class world lake. We want a world-class town. Nothing short is acceptable. And then by bringing, being our own change, right? There's no point in just asking for things and then you still carry on with your life doing your day to day and still uh, dumping your own trash into the lake and in the public space. So all these different things which came together and ensured that there is a change that happened in front of our eyes. So uh, what I'll do in the next couple of minutes again is I'll introduce you to what this uh, team um, which brought this change and how we went about doing this in a step by step manner to achieve the results that you see on the screen. Um, Chitlapakam Rising is a volunteering group. It started with a couple of uh, friends in the neighborhood, in the town, with a motto of making the town better, making Chitlapakam better. So it's a grassroots volunteering group, which was started with a very pure intent of bringing change, bringing corrections in how uh, we live making sure that we understand we are in a climate crisis world, right? Where uh, everything is really important to make sure that we turn things around and leave a town which is uh, going to be 
of a better quality to the next generation. So what you see uh, again in the screen is so this is uh, our humble beginnings where few of us, I mean literally three of us started uh, discussing what kind of changes we can bring to the town. Waste management is a big issue. It's still a big issue. So back then people used to dump garbage on the streets and we took some inspiration from other like minded groups across India. Um, some of you may know and heard about uh, Ugly Indian. It's a very thriving Facebook group operating out of Bangalore. Their concept is when we keep a street clean, painted and looking beautiful, people will hesitate to throw trash on the streets. So we kind of picked some inspiration from there. The larger inspiration came from uh, people like uh, there is a person named uh, D.B. Sridharan. He's the author of a book called the Good News India, and he runs a he used to run a portal called goodnewsindia.com. He used to highlight good Samaritan work that happens across India in deep villages, deepest corners of India, where we highlighted the positive things that happens and then projected all the positive things, nothing negative that he will talk about. So all these were inspiration for us, some of us to start thinking that we should also contribute and do something uh, different, which will make sure that uh, the town improves. So this is the first activity where we gathered, looked at a uh, street corner. This is uh, in the town, and this is one of the streets I take to when uh, come to Tekem. So we said, OK, let's do something about it. Let's start uh, cleaning the location. We will do it on our own. As I said, uh, when I stepped in and people uh, know me as a IT person, right who has returned from the us and there are others who are uh, much more affluent uh, doing business they're all well established in the town but a couple of us when we stepped in and started touching the garbage and then packaging it in a sack there were uh, people who were uh, asking us i mean what are you trying to do is it a photo opportunity you are trying to get why do you do this we are pay paying taxes anyway why isn't the government cleaning it and some even from the uh, other side even started pushing us saying that no, no, you should not be doing this. It's our job. Don't try to take fame from us. So there were a lot of pushes and pulls coming from different corners, even to do a very small change of cleaning a small street corner and making it tidy. But we never gave up. We just uh, did one street and then we went on to the other streets. So streets after streets, we started making sure that there are no ugly corners which are left unattended. And the more we did clean up, the more we painted. So there is uh, at least a acknowledgement that from the people side that they said, OK, now somebody is now uh, spending time to clean the mess that they are leaving with. There is lesser and lesser of ugly corners that uh, started taking shape in the town. It's not 100 percent. We still have ugly corners. There is still a lot more work to be done, but this was this was our humble start. And then we and this kind of three people team Many others started watching and of course social media plays a vital role. Uh, platforms like Facebook, I mean amazingly beautiful for these kind of causes where uh, people get a quick view of what we do and then they start uh, joining us in our activities and say that how can we participate and then we say you spend uh, one hour in your weekend. Just give us your one hour on a Saturday morning and a Sunday morning and then we can try to increase our size and then do bigger things. And uh, scope of what we started de dealing with increased uh, with that mindset shift and with more and more people i mean mainly college kids joining us and those of you who have visited chennai uh, this is very closer to the airport so the wall used to be filled with political posters all advertisements uh, it's a very ugly wall that we have in chennai in many of the corners there is still a very habitual way of using uh, putting posters on public walls and again, same principles we said, if a place is clean, if it is tidy, if it is beautiful, then people will hesitate to uh, make that place ugly. So we started cleaning, clearing the posters. We started painting and we created some artwork involving school kids and college kids. And this itself was a big thing that again pulled more and more people towards us. So three became hundreds, literally hundreds, where we said every weekend we will take a bus stop, we will take a uh, flyover wall, we'll take a metro pillar or a railway station wall to say that now this could be the next activity that we do. So the idea is to again uh, make people think that. Beauty makes sense, beautiful neighborhood makes sense, and uh, it could be that. I think we are still a developing nation and not probably many had the advantage of 
visiting places, visiting developed countries to know what uh, uh, hygiene and a beauty looks like. But the moment you show that the difference is stalking and the beautiful walls, beautiful streets literally means uh, a beautiful existence in the town. There are more and more adoption of people joining the team and increasing our scale. The other big thing that we are proud about uh, bringing is the greening initiatives. And you all know that uh, cyclones remove the green cover. We said uh, let's increase the green cover and not one tree at a time. We said let's do hundreds of trees at a time. And we like the idea about uh, Miyawaki, the Japanese uh, technique to really create uh, forests in a urban landscape. So we started doing that uh, avenue street, street streets, corner uh, trees plus finding some large park areas and other government uh, land parcels to create uh, mini forests, uh, what is called as the Miyawaki. And we again, I think this brought a lot more kids into the uh, team because they find it very exciting to get involved in planting trees, in creating uh, seed balls, and then visiting uh, nearby forest areas and hills and throwing seed balls. So uh, besides getting results outcome, this also created some uh, motivational aspect for the kids to step out of their uh, TV time, tap time, and then getting some sun uh, walking with us. And through that process, understanding uh, why uh, nature is important and what climate crisis means and why are we doing this greening activity? So it, it served as a dual purpose of getting uh, people volunteer to bring the green cover, plus also make sure that the awareness quotient is increased by kids participation. Again, a phenomenal outcome where we were able to, uh, as of today, literally 1000 plus trees planted and 10,000 plus seed balls made, uh, thrown around. And the great thing is the, the town becomes a very uh, aware town through these processes. We keep writing about it. We keep branding, saying that these are all good initiatives that are happening and there is a replication of these good things across the town and even uh, beyond the town itself. So many people uh, now engage in activities, weekend activities to do greening, do cleaning, to know more about their town and see how they can bring changes. And with scale, our responsibility also increased, right? And we said, OK, what else uh, we could focus on? There were all obviously other things like uh, the projects that the uh, administration does. Uh, roads are not done to specifications. They don't scrape off existing road. They blindly lay on top of the existing road. So we became more aware as a group. We said, OK, now with more scale, we can take more responsibilities. We started questioning the proper way of laying a road. If a road is not done, we question why is the tax money getting taken when the results are not shown to us, to the public. So more changes came and some we also, uh, I mean, try to bring some attention by doing these things like when we see a pothole, we said, OK, let's do an event. We'll put some plants there, so which will get more attention. And a developing nation, a developing state uh, like the ones we are in, I think uh, the more um, noise, the more awareness we make, we get uh, attention sooner. And we don't stop with just activities. We said, let's also create a litigation to the high court saying, why is their specifications not followed uh, for even as simple as the thing as laying a road? And uh, the government, the court intervened and made sure the government was uh, mandated to do proper road and not just for the town that we live in, that this is now applicable for the entire state. So if you are following news in Chennai, you would be seeing about uh, scraping of road, milling of road. We were one of the initial activism group which kind of seeded this thought that road should be properly done. And now we have a legal mandate which is now enabled for the state as well. Um, and then we create awareness among our uh, residents, making sure that everybody is aware of as simple as a right to information act, a phenomenal weapon that uh, as a citizen we can use to question whether something is done right, what is to be expected from the government. We created sessions like aiming for IAS to make sure that people can uh, get a vision for themselves to become an IAS, IPS, and not just chase a regular track of uh, becoming an IT person or engineer and other tracks. And we just showed them there are different ways on how they can uh, carve out their own career. Of course, with uh, election awareness, we told them uh, how do they go about uh, voting for the right person and not get into uh, uh, cash for vote. 
situations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we keep doing these awareness and making sure the residents become more aware of uh, what a uh, uh, what their rights are and what they should be doing as a citizen to make sure they improve the town and the quality of life that we have in the town. And now the the core theme of the presentation itself, right? I think uh, most of you in Chennai, you would know what uh, Chennai floods was. So it, it doesn't need any introduction. So 2015 literally showed us what uh, the planet can do. If you're not about mindful about our neighborhood, if you're not mindful about nature, if you're not mindful about uh, the lakes, the canals, the rivers, and if you keep neglecting the surrounding, how nature can become worse and then literally show us uh, how we should correct ourselves, right? That's what happened in 2015. And of course, the root cause after the catastrophe happened, the government did a lot of uh, analysis, documented root cause, and everything pointed to uh, one simple thing, which is, of course, the water bodies are neglected, the canals are neglected, right? Either we are uh, filling water bodies with garbage and the sewage and keeping it full. So every small rain will flood the towns. The canals are encroached, which makes makes the water have uh, take its own route to come and flood the homes because the canals are all encroached. The water bodies are polluted, which means the groundwater, which we are all consuming, of course, is polluted. And to make it worse, there is also a water scarcity, which happened the very next year. Again, the reason is everything is filled with garbage and sewage. There is no way for water to percolate down and making sure that the reservoirs are recharged, the aquifer, aquifers are recharged for us to draw water for our consumption needs, right? I think this was like the alarm bell that sounded, which also made us shift our focus uh, onto our own water bodies in and around the town that we, we live in. And Chitlapakam Lake is a primary water body which got our attention. And what you are seeing is the lake, which has become a dump yard over the last two decades, and how the uh, flood situation literally showed us that because of this, the town started flooding. And if we had preserved this as a freshwater lake, we wouldn't have had that situation. So we changed our focus and spent more time around this. So the weekend activities kind of focused more and more on the lake. So we started calling for volunteers and then again as always so 10 became 20 20 became 30 30 became 40 so we said while i mean as i said it's a very daunting task to remove a huge garbage by just pure volunteering activities and just pure uh, pair of hands coming together and collecting the trash right it's literally tons and tons of garbage but then our intent is to improve the uh, awareness on this we said it doesn't matter whether it is five of us or 10 of us or 20 of us. Let's just consistently do this every weekend. We started auditing what kind of trash ends up in the lake, right? Is it uh, a package from a biscuit company or a shampoo bottle or whatever that is to raise awareness back into those manufacturers, back into those uh, government officials to say that this needs some proper segregation, recycle, reuse, all that should happen. And we can't just blindly dump into the lake. And through this process, the residents who also joined, they were also aware that their trash, when it leaves their home, it doesn't clean their home, but it's only polluting their lake and then polluting their groundwater indirectly and causing harmful things such as even cancer. Right. So this kind of, again, helped drumbeat the need for preserving the water resource, plus making the residents more mindful and take make media take notice of us plus make officials take notice of us, which kind of push them into a mode that uh, they should be, they should no longer be neglecting a water body. And that precisely happened. So what happened is in 2019 in June, we said government, we started cleaning it ourselves. 10 became 20, 20 became 40, 40 became 100. But still you are not literally stepping in and helping us with your machinery and the department which is responsible for maintaining the lake. You are not stepping in to do that. So then if you're not able to do it, give it to us and then we will start doing it the whole lake somehow. And the government said, uh, you go ahead and do whatever you can. And we just told the residents, this is what the stance is. Why don't every resident just come into the lake and we'll just show a massive cleanup and see how we can do it sooner, right? And uh, I mean, we didn't literally think that there'll be thousands of people who will really take that seriously and then join on the ground. But that's exactly what happened. So we literally had 
2000 people come on a june sunday morning into the lake saying that we will take responsibility and we will start cleaning and not just individuals uh, college kids its families coming with their kids right their uh, grandparents and so many of them getting into the lake and this created so much of attention across the town across the city across the state it even uh, was heard by the chief minister of that time the officials the senior officials everybody took notice of uh, such a massive people movement that is happening and the beautiful thing is we did this for with this massive people strength we continued this for a couple of weeks which literally made it to uh, newspapers and media which finally got us attention while this was a hard work i noticed that everybody who participated was literally having absolute fun right nobody was scribbling about uh, working in a sewage filled lake or trying to take uh, garbage uh, which is uh, getting dumped there for over two decades right all rotten things and they didn't mind bringing the kids into such a filthy environment of course we had uh, gloves we had uh, hygiene uh, considered but there is absolute happiness in what we saw um, each and every resident was going through and a very interesting reflection of doing above and beyond right literally brings happiness which you may not necessarily find in a regular thing so doing something like this and then thinking just just a thinking of you are trying to fix something which will be here lasting for years and years and years and uh, i think somebody said the water bodies are visible from the space right and no other man made creations human made creation is visible from space water bodies are oceans and lakes and rivers are highly visible from the space such a significant contribution that we will be doing by doing more and more of this awareness creation and uh, cleansing and that happiness was very very visibly seen with all the participants who came to the lake week after week and we have we are very good in documenting every aspect of it every second of it so again i'll, I'll share what that uh, facebook page is and you can go there and look at the videos so you will see people uh, singing dancing when they do the activities we had our yoga day inside the garbage <laughs> near the garbage so nobody really cared or uh, even thought this as a trouble but they all had absolute happiness in making sure that they join week after week they are able to bring the change that uh, we want to see and there is the consistency that we were able to demonstrate back to the government which said uh, now uh, sec i think i'm missing a slide okay sorry about that accidental deletion of a slide so um, so when we made this sure that consistency existed and we uh, made sure we told the government that there's no stopping of this the people uh, movement will only add on week on week because there is literally happiness seen on the ground there is nobody cringing cribbing about uh, them doing the work and uh, the officials not stepping in so the government took notice of it they knew that this will not see a stoppage and they have to do something to uh, make sure it doesn't become a people revolution in a way i think that that's the kind of momentum this was getting in and finally after a consistent effort of weeks of this people stepping in and then doing the activity at the lake the government steps in so the chief minister of that day he said uh, we will do it ourselves um residents you can take rest he literally said this in the uh, assembly in front of all the elected uh, representatives he said uh, we will step in now we will bring in 25 crores of uh, rupees to rejuvenate the lake and then the uh, residents can step away uh, take rest while we start doing it and then turning this into a world class lake so that is the commitment he gave stepping in and doing this again a, a huge reflection of the initial uh, few slides i showed you where uh, if the intent is genuine absolutely the, our intent was very genuine i mean we didn't have any other uh, thoughts of uh, exploiting this for anything else everyone involved had their day job i mean i had a day job in techem i have a day job in techem and everybody else is a, either a businessman or a professor or a college student or uh, even a government employee there were policemen there was uh, military personnel all people from all walks of life right and everyone 
had uh, absolute intent to do the right thing and nobody had a second thought of using this for some other personal gains absolutely not and when such a genuine intent is brought in i mean as i said earlier the universe will just find all sorts of things to uh, help you and in our case when we said we will do the uh, revival lay cleanup we will step in the message just got broadcasted widely even by uh, celebrities we, we, we didn't even anticipate such a thing would happen so it was shared by celebrities from all across and that kind of created the momentum we had which made the government take notice of it and then bring in missionaries so 25 crores of uh, budget allocated contract done contractors brought in huge missionaries were brought in um, jcbs and proclaimers and what nots um, in 2019 which started reviving the lake rejuvenating the lake and then give us a freshwater lake that uh, we were demanding for uh, decades and more so in the last 10 years the outcome is the town now has a very beautiful lake um, so this was the 2017 version of it and 2019 the activities we started doing and after the government stepped in the plastic every bit of it is completely removed the uh, area of the lake is uh, what they call is uh, as a desilting that they do where they remove all the contaminated soil and everything from the lake they moved it out and now it is carrying pristine water and every weekend i go there it's just uh, two minutes from my home it has fresh water throughout the year and we ensured no sewage uh, enters the lake there is a beautiful walkway where people come in and you will see literally hundreds of people who walk in use the lake to uh, use it as a recreation place absolute bliss to uh, be in and again this is nothing less of a universe literally stepping in uh, with so many people so many supporters so many uh, officials who, who had a positive inclination to bring some changes and uh, as of today it's a 50 acres water spread with fresh water 2 kilometers of uh, walkway and very importantly it reduced the flood risks which is seen in the town every year year on year and uh, typically we have seen uh, flood even for a small rain i mean 2015 of course we saw houses go under 6 feet and 7 feet of water and after that we could see still see houses getting flooded after all this work is done the flood risk has absolutely minimized so there is I, i would say minimized by 80% there is still some minor pending tasks which will get done which will make the town 100% uh, flood free and the other important aspect is the groundwater recharging that happens because of all this positive work that has happened in the town people used to buy trucks of water for their drinking needs and every other needs and that has completely minimized in the last 2 years absolutely by i, I would say even by 75 80% the water scarcity issues have uh, gone down and the beautiful aspect of the lake becoming a recreation uh, place because no nobody would be able to access when there was garbage and sewage people would uh, wouldn't even want to come in themselves forget about bringing the kids now if you go in on a saturday morning or any, any day for that matter mornings or evenings you will see literally hundreds of people using the lake walking around having a beautiful time with the family with the kids and this method of reviving rejuvenating a lake has become a model for the city for the town and there are talks to make sure that this is now templatized and replicated and then done in many other places across the town and we are helping to document how it was done for example uh, as simple as i mean if you are in chennai you would already know every storm water drain in chennai is filled with black water and gray water because the drainage system is not up to mark yet so what one of the design aspect we influenced and we mandated the officials to do was to make sure that there is a peripheral drain towards the other end of the lake to make sure everything is intercepted and then sent away from the lake to a nearby treatment plant eventually but not letting it enter the lake make sure that the lake remains a freshwater lake right this is one of those uh, model that we can templatize and then do for uh, more lakes and there is already discussion of spreading the radius of uh, what other lakes will get changed by this model and how we can uh, create more such beautiful lakes across in chennai and the irony is the district that we are in it's a district of 1000 lakes and out of the 1000 lakes there is every possibility that at least 90% of them is neglected filled with sewage 
partially with garbage where we have to take this model and replicate. And again, I think uh, looking at the uh, universe, stepping in and acting on, I'm sure with more people participation in each of those neighborhood, we could bring these lasting changes which we are able to uh, achieve. And all these are achieved by just contributing one hour or maximum two hours in a weekend, Saturday or a Sunday, one hour to bring the awareness, to bring people in, to make them uh, become the change and making sure that we are consistent. We are making sure that uh, we will make the government take notice and then making sure that uh, there is no other uh, ways for them to neglect these things any further. And uh, Tekem also participated. So I took uh, some of our team members into the lake uh, two, three months back. So uh, we are also trying to see how we can involve uh, more of you join activities like this. I'm sure there are uh, such activities across the country. I know Hyderabad has some uh, team which does a similar thing. But you as an individual, I mean, you could definitely look at your own neighborhood and see what is needed. Form a team if there is uh, none already. Uh, but join an existing team to see how your contribution can go in uh, bringing some of uh, some lasting changes like this one. Um, again, I mean, we're not stopping with this. Of course, there will be continuous improvements. I mean, we visit uh, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, one hour in the morning. We'll be at the lake. We recently introduced a use me bin to make sure people doesn't have the again, the habitual trash station doesn't throw trash into the fresh water. And uh, I mean, trust me, there are still people who are habitual about uh, throwing trash wherever they feel like. So these kind of uh, continuous improvements of. Adding these bins, creating more and more of these uh, awareness stories, doing more and more activities like uh, seed ball creations and making sure people start loving nature, taking ownership of it and then contributing back and making the government take notice. And as a developing nation, I mean, we have to do these things to get attention from the government because there are a number of issues all around us. And maybe the one which uh, creates the uh, necessary amount of awareness and noise and with uh, data points will probably get the attention than all the others. And uh, a world class lake is certainly in the making. I mean, I can assure you that by end of next year, there'll be a world class lake with all the amenities. You can even imagine what a lake should have. And we also ensured we created uh, two island inside the lake, a small mound. So the greenery happens there. So birds and reptiles and all other life forms will also have a space in the lake while we enjoy as humans all are walking all around the lakeside. And every bit is documented. Every bit is uh, uh, in the Facebook page. So you can log in there, uh, look for yourself uh, what the activities have been in the last seven, eight years where uh, we have uh, done in the town. Again, uh, I mean, going back to the theme of the presentation, right? I think this is absolute bliss in terms of uh, us getting an even an opportunity to make a difference. And uh, the decade that we are in with the climate crisis just looming in our head, there are n number of opportunities that we can make as individuals, either by joining some group which is already uh, bringing the change, by lending your hands, becoming a volunteer, right? Spending your one hour. And uh, trust me on this, the satisfaction level you get by involving in some of these is phenomenally big. Of course, uh, being an IT person, of course, we are bringing lasting changes through automation to our global customer base. But I think this has a lasting change as well. Again, to summarize, I mean, in my mind, true happiness is attained chasing a worthy purpose. And I think uh, dealing with nature, bringing some lasting changes in our neighborhood, right? Making sure our uh, lakes are saved, our rivers are saved, our canals are saved. We increase the green cover. I mean, absolutely uh, is a path to happiness. And as uh, I mean, I noticed this when I was stitching this presentation, I think the purpose of our lives is to be happy. I mean, that's uh, I mean, that's a no brainer. And even our uh, India, the, the pledge we take as a citizen. So it just says that we should strive for others happiness, right? That that's what the ultimate goal for us is. And happiness, of course, comes in different forms. And one of the easiest form is to just uh, tag ourselves with a worthy purpose and make sure that uh, we give our contribution and we become the change. And thanks for uh, joining me uh, this hour. And I hope I made uh, uh, your time useful in the last hour. And uh, I'm happy to take questions. And uh, thank you and thank you, Universe. And this is the aerial view of the lake, which has those uh, two um, islands in the middle 
which has its own greening. There are a lot of uh, birds which have now uh, joined there and then calling it as home. Uh, we could see like cranes and uh, some pelicans and then other forms of birds. There are snakes, there are reptiles. And uh, thanks for each and everyone for taking the time. And I'm sure, uh, uh, I hope I have made your time useful and I'm more than happy to listen to any questions and then uh, give you the answers. So, Saurabh, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you much. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Inspiration. Inspiration talk and it's almost spiritual as you said you know when you ended by saying that if you're attached to the happiness of others you become happy right so 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 spiritual but you know going back to very mundane if i were in the government i would be chasing you and trying to give you a ticket yep is it happening <laughs> yeah it did happen uh, kg as i said right people fight you when you start to uh, not go with the flow Right when you start questioning them more and more, when you start uh, challenging them, why are you not investing here and why are you investing in something else which is useless? So then the there is definitely difficulties thrown by them, but then with uh, the positive mindset of many people around you, and if you show that it's not a selfish intent here and there is a real benefit that the town will get, and you are not one person, you are uh, backed by a larger team <laughs> that. Thread slowly fades away and uh, they also start no, to play for what you. What I thought was that if you can't beat them, join them. So they would have wanted you to take a, become an MLA or something yeah. or LC. Did they do that? No, no. See, they, see, they definitely challenged in the beginning, KG, right? They definitely wanted to ch challenge because I think, see, some the way the political mindset thinks is, I mean, why are they doing it? We should be the one who should be doing it. We, by doing this, will they take the fame and uh, the glory shifts to the right side and not to them is probably the initial thought they had. But then they realized we are not, we, our intent is not that. Now our intent is not to become MLA or uh, shifting the side. So they joined us to make sure our side is strengthened. So jointly we were able to achieve this. Super. Thank you. I'll, I'll get off to this thing. Shreya, you may want to read some questions off. I'll be, I'll be reading the questions, KG. Thank you. Ah, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, that was really, I mean, wonderful, Sunil. Uh, the, the amount of efforts that you have put in and with all the challenges, it, it is it is really mind blowing. Uh, we have got a lot of positive comments and praises and a lot of questions too. So we'll head on to our first question. Uh, our first question is from Suresh Kumar M. Suresh Kumar asks, how are we getting support from government officials? How it's getting maintained by itself? I mean, how the solid vests are getting collected routinely, whereas in fast world where one time usages are habituated and people might not find a way to dispose their routine solid vestiges. Yep. See, unfortunately, in India, this whole waste management is still a big challenge that is hanging over our head. There is hardly any any uh, state, any city which has uh, perfected it. I've been reading some positive stories from Indoor and from town in Kerala called Alape, where they have at least uh, mandated source segregation and then try to uh, create awareness about uh, recycling and reuse. So in our town, uh, I mean, I would say it's not 100% yet. I mean, they have still uh, in the initial stages of how to handle waste management. But one good thing is they now collect door to door from each and every houses. They take it in a bin, they move it to a truck and they used to take a easy route of dumping it in the lake. Now they stop doing all that uh, because of our uh, involvement. They now take it far away from people's residences. They have a big garbage uh, dump yard. Unfortunately, the segregation of that and then recycling and making sure they're not impacting some other place, even though it is far off from uh, residents, it's still not there. I think that that's the honest truth of it. And I mean, of course, as I said, this again poses opportunity for many of us here who has some idea about waste management to get involved in the ground and then see how we can accelerate that whole change. Okay, thank you. Uh, so anyway, our next next question is from Stanley Rakesh. He asked, what is the percentage of youngsters in your team? <laughs> so I would like to think myself as an youngster as well. Uh, but then the question is about uh, millennials <laughs> joining. The unfortunate truth is millennials are still. Uh, see, the, the if you look at the big activity like the one I said in June 2019, where we said we will we did that mega cleanup. That has at least a 50% uh, count of millennials and college kids and all of them joining, depending on the activity. I mean, if I, if we are doing a interesting work like uh, painting a public wall, we will see 80% of the millennials uh, will be the count that we see. 
but in a very generic creation of awareness uh, doing some plastic cleanup meeting officials the, uh, the the ratio was lesser than what what it should be i mean i would put it uh, that way i think the millennials we still have some more work to make sure that we uh, target them and the, somebody suggested i mean facebook is not the place maybe i should do a instagram post to even attract the millennials maybe we'll get there sometime okay i have a parallel questions uh, question re regarding the same uh, sunil do you think the all the climate change movement that that is going on right now on the social media has helped to your movement in some or other way because there are people like, right who, who 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 wait for the opportunity to get their contribution in some or other way no i think they see the awareness on uh, i mean i think acknowledging that we are in a climate crisis world itself is definitely something which has helped us so even this 25 crores fund it came from the environment uh, department which said okay now lakes needs to be revived we can no longer neglect it especially after the floods that happened right and all the awareness that the climate crisis tag is getting so environment division is at least in a position to at least acknowledge some of this and when they started they said okay now let's start with this i know 90% of the lakes are in this mode mode let's start with this and this can become a model for the state is how they even started and of course, I mean, our uh, system and uh, things will challenge the acceleration that we need to get there. I mean, the, it took us three years and we're still at a 50% stage. But if 50% can be this beautiful, we can imagine how a 100% revived lake can really become like and how this model can be replicated. Yes, climate crisis helps in a way. Okay, thank you. Next question is from Jesh Kanubhai Nakrani, and he asked, have you faced any challenges from local administrative and political group if yes how was it handled now we did uh, see we don't get any direct uh, uh, difficulties from them right i think in the initial days the difficulty is purely by the neglect that we will see right we will keep sending so many requests so many petitions and so many um, representations but you won't see any result coming back but the moment we said when we are consistent and we will not give up until you really uh, take care of us and we will make it as a election theme if you're not literally addressing the importance of lake and canals. So they started working with us to make sure that they make it as a election um, mani manifesto to say that, okay, now lakes will be taken care, right? The canals will be taken care. So th th these became a election manifesto the moment they understood that these cannot be ignored anymore. And uh, as KG was pointing, so they kind of joined us rather than challenging us more. But challenges were there, but I mean, it's not no longer a consistent issue for us now. Okay, great. Uh, Sunil, do you plan to expand your initiative to some other places in India in future, maybe? Uh, not exactly. I think see, our belief is, see, I think see, I do this here because I live here. My house is just maybe 10 more houses from that picture for what you see here. Uh, I started this because it's in our vicinity and a couple of friends in the town said uh, we should do this because otherwise we can't live in the town. That's the situation we were dealt with. I mean, personally, I mean, we all know, right? I think in IT, I mean, we all deal with a very busy uh, uh, schedule and uh, the weekends are in a way free and we're able to at least maintain the consistency that the town needs. Our idea of promoting this to a pan India moment is to motivate more people in other towns, other neighborhoods which is starting to take shape. I mean, there are uh, n number of other groups which are now keeping nature as a theme and then bringing some awareness, right? Taking ownership of their own neighborhood and then bring. And we will be participating with them just to helping them strengthening their hands. And of course, maybe uh, some of the people who retire and then go into full time, I'm sure they are thinking of uh, going to their native and then start spearheading some of these uh, activities. But us as a Chitlapakam rising group, I mean, we are very centric to Chitlapakam, the town that we live in. So our current intent is to motivate other groups and not necessarily do any uh, pan India as of now. But then, I mean, universe is universe, right? Who knows what the direction will be next? Okay. Next question is from Premi Kumar uh, Sunil, and he asks, "We are amazed by the work. Thank you. How to join the team and to make our Earth better?" So the easiest way is to just uh, follow us on the Facebook page, right? It's called the Chitlapakam Rising. There is a page and a discussion group. And then activities are po posted there. And uh, within Techem, we will anyway announce if there are any uh, 
volunteering activity we are uh, coordinating for tech camp but even otherwise you are free to join any of the things that we uh, announce and then uh, that's the easiest way i mean spending some volunteering hours is the easiest way to join the group okay excellent my no next question is uh, on an average how much time were you spending on this especially in the beginning when you hardly had any volunteers see we kind of when we started we said two hours in a week is the theme that we'll chase after saturday one hour and sunday one hour and to maximum extent that's how it has been uh, Uh, happening unless otherwise there is a larger event like the june 2019 which takes some 4 hours over a weekend typically any weekend is just 1 hour on a saturday or 1 hour on a sunday so roughly that is what uh, we are aiming to do i think and that to me is a uh, large enough time that you can uh, dedicate to a social cause right and then involve in yourself planting trees or doing some of these activities so two two hours in a week maximum Okay. Uh, I have a personal question, Sunil. So you mentioned you you raised a couple of items in the league, right? So can you please tell us more about that? I mean, how the process went? See, what we did is uh, so when the government stepped in and said that they will take care of it, and we said uh, you can take care of it, but uh, you need to listen to what the residents want and what our inputs are, right? And we said, uh, I mean, of course, sewage should not be coming in, so we said we should construct a peripheral drain on this side so the water will just escape the grain. black will escape and only fresh water will come through this canal here and we said uh, i mean lake is lake right it's not just for a human water need uh, we we used to have a lot of pelicans even when it was filled with uh, sewage right because it had a different kind of fish and maybe pelicans like those fix fishes and we had pelicans from australia and us even uh, come to this place so we said we should create at least a mound which has uh, some space for green so trees which can be used by birds right and then some greenery where other forms of life like reptiles will take home we asked actually for one and the government thought about it and said that that's a very interesting ask and they said we will give you two and uh, during the process they made sure these two were created and these two are now visible on google maps and whatever other uh, aerial views that we get and it's a very lasting iconic uh, image of the lake definitely definitely Uh, i think we can take a couple of more questions uh, before we close uh, so my next question would be are there any challenges that that you still face let's see there are i mean as i said no I mean challenges as in uh, i mean not threats but the real challenges the uh, the delay in getting things done right of course i mean as i said as a developing nation we only have a handful of funds that the government can enable for things like this Absolutely. right and there are thousands of lakes and we are talking about one here so the uh, attention that you will get from the higher officials the uh, mlas and mps is very minuscule because we are dealing with just a small ratio that that's the ongoing challenge where the we are trying to increase the attention from the officials so we can accelerate some of this our interest is to get this finished hand it over to the public right with a complete uh, fencing full circular walkway park parking and all that so it can just become a place and thrive on its own so that's the aim and the challenge is the delay that we are still faced with we have a question from asif sunil and he asked during the lockdown we saw a drastic change in climatic condition even in some parts of the country we saw that wild animals were freely walking on the roads as a small step do you think the corporate should take an initiative of conducting only virtual events which will avoid less traveling and eventually lead to and less or no carbon carbon emissions i'm sorry as well as fuel saving see i think see we're all human beings and we all need to socially be interacting right i think virtual will definitely help to some extent but then it's inevitable that we all meet um, and then uh, work together collaborate together and all that but what should ultimately happen i mean which is happening again in all the metros things are happening public transportation is improving we could see even bangalore getting its metro hyderabad has got one chennai has got the phase 1 phase 2 done now there is more uh, metro uh, lines which are coming and there is one planned just next to our office so more of these will make sure that then of course we have to change our habit of using uh, metros and buses more so the emission can be controlled in that manner but by making more and more uh, virtual it may not be a long term uh, option where because we have to be socially alive uh, as human beings right i think we all need to meet each other i mean if not all five days 
at least three days in a week when we continue a hybrid method of working. But the real solution is to make sure that the public transportation is improved. And again, that could be an opportunity for us uh, who, who are thinking, what could I do? What could I contribute? So we can, I mean, of course, I mean, in our team, there are folks who take that as a priority as well, right? How do we improve our public transportation within the town? Thank you. Thank you. So that was our last question, Sunil. And uh, with that, we can and close it. Uh, I'll just yeah, summarize what. Yeah, I'll just, just summarize. Sure, okay. sure, sure. For us, Sunil, Tech Mahindra, uh, senior leader. So, you know, I'm sure there are lots of questions, lot of, lots of uh, good things we were saying. So, you know, Sunil, I'm going to kind of let the avalanche come to you directly. Uh, yeah. Let me write to him. Uh, if they want to ask a question, specific question, or they want to seek any uh, clarifications, or you know, want to give him a accolade, do write to him. I'm sure you know you can easily find him on the uh, global address list. So go ahead and do that. Thank you very much, Sunil. Again, I'll shut up and let uh, Saurabh do the honors. Thank you, thank you, KG. Thank you, KG. Uh, Sunil, you started with I mean telling about how you how, how you started your journey and. Uh, the amount of efforts that you put in with as you have a full time job and along with that you are also doing this kind of work. So that is absolutely I mean mind blowing. Uh, I know this will be inspiring to a lot of us and absolutely the work that we have done will has also inspired a lot from the not only the company but also from uh, many uh, uh, citizens too. So thank you so much once again and we hope to see you back again on prime time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your time. KG, thanks for hosting. Thank you so much.